guys. What's up? Welcome back to the podcast, dude. We're back. We are back in the studio, finally. It's been a while. It has been a long time. Been on the friggin' road a lot and working on main channel videos and all this other crap. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot. But uh, finally back home for a little bit, which is a good feeling. Uh, because, you know, as much as I love doing shows and everything, um, man, it's awesome being at your own house where you can just fucking put whatever clothes you want to put on and you can, you got all your stuff there and you can sit on your cat. Dude, it's the best. I love being home. Nothing like being home. It's great. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be back for real in the studio. We're here, dude. Um, I just spent, um, probably 20 minutes looking for the remote and so that was fun. Looked in every drawer and I was like, where the fuck fuck did it go? I lifted up those chairs over there and I didn't see it. So I was like, okay, so someone, did someone fucking break in here, steal the remote and nothing else and then leave? I'm like, no, that's impossible. So where the fuck did it go? Where where the hell did the, the remote go? And uh, I and it's dude, it, it, you know, and it's and it's frustrating because I was like, hey, there's no way because I had my this is pretty big, but I got a I I have a, I have an assistant now, so that's been helping me with stuff because I'm trying to, you know focus on just creating videos. So I have an assistant now and she's great. And, and she was here like, you know, tidying up, getting things ready for the podcast. And, um, I was like, did you see the rem- a remote here for the TV <laughs> when you were tidying up? And then she was like, uh, no, I didn't see one, but have you tried between looking between the cushions? And then I did. And there it was. So, the fuck, man? What the fuck? And I do the crazy thing about that. I lifted both chairs and looked underneath them, and I didn't see it. But no, someone tells me no. Look between the cushions, and there it is. What the fuck? But you know, so shout out, shout out the assistant, man. She she found it, and now we got the VRG logo on the TV. Thank gosh. Uh, but yeah, dude. Thanks to everybody who showed up to the uh, the Appleton shows. They were. They were a good time. They were a lot of fun. I think I might zoom in on myself. One second. <clears throat> okay, that feels better. I feel I feel like I'm I feel like that's closer now. Um close. Like that Neo song? I love that song. Turn the lights on in the night. But yeah, thanks everybody. God, sorry. Thanks everybody who showed up to the Appleton shows in uh the last last weekend. Those were a lot of fun. Those were lit. Um, <clears throat> those are a good time. Appleton is a weird fucking town, dude. Appleton, Wisconsin. Have you ever been there? Me neither. I have for the first time. Uh, Siri, please. I'm not talking to you, okay? It's not always about you, all right? Appleton, Wisconsin is weird. Uh, the airport has got four gates there. And also, like I said in my last episode, but uh, one, they just have, they have a huge ping pong table there. But you know what's funny about that? We were leaving. My flight was at like 11. We got there at like 9.30. And I was like, okay, I'm a pretty security line, empty, nobody there. And we didn't have to take out our laptops or take our shoes off or anything. They were just like, yeah, put all your shit in this bin and walk right there. It's okay. We, there's nobody here. Um, so we did that, made it through all good. And then uh, I was like, okay, I'm pretty hungry. It's like breakfast time. Maybe I'll go get something to eat at this uh, at one of the restaurants in there. And in the terminal, there's one. There's one restaurant in the Appleton Airport. Okay, and I uh, I go to the restaurant and because they got a breakfast menu there, and I was like, okay, cool. I got like a bagel. And I was like, hey, can I get the the bagel? And they're like, oh, our kitchen's closed. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. When does it open? And they're like, eleven. That's when my flight boards. Um, and I was like. So I just got like a fucking yogurt or some shit that they had in the thing. But it's like, dude, how are you going to be a breakfast restaurant in an airport <laughs> and you don't open until 11, right? 
That's insane, Appleton. What are you doing? And every other restaurant in Appleton closes at like 3 p.m. Guys, people still eat after 3. Or maybe not. Maybe in Appleton, everybody goes to bed at a, at a nice early 4 p.m., you know? I look you could tell that, though. That is not a late-night town. I could sense that. Because when we did the late shows... uh. You know, we'd have a show that started at 7 or 7.30, and then the second show would start at like 10 or 10.15 or something. And uh, first show, electric. Energy was insane. Super pe- people were fucking stoked to be there. There were a lot of energy, a lot of laughs. And then both of the late shows, it was just like people were like yawning and like just not, not as high energy, you know what I mean? And I get it, it's late. But especially in Appleton when, you know... That's the latest I think anybody's ever been up (laughs) because other places close at fucking three o'clock. But no, the crowds were sick and I had a good time at Appleton. So thanks for coming out. Thanks for for supporting. Um, But yeah, now we're back and I'm going to talk about some stuff. Actually, sorry. At the end of this video, it ends with a special interview. Okay. We have a special interview at the end of this video and end of this podcast. uh, It is with one of the actors who is in that uh, short TV uh, show slash movie that we talked about, the fucking Forbidden Love Alphas uh, series. So I interviewed one of the actors in that. We got some insight into the production of one of these real short slash short TV uh, films. So stick around for that. Um, But first off, let's... uh, Dude, let's talk about this TikTok that I that I that I found because it is so funny. And as soon as I saw it, and I was like, "Oh, this is fucking perfect for the podcast. This is gonna this is gonna crack everybody up." Okay, so hold on, let me just open it here. Let me just uh, okay. So, um, I think it's been interesting. I a little pref I'll I'll preface this with a little uh you know a little monologue here. I'm. Um, so I think it's been very interesting to see the uh, over the course of the last ten years um, the uh, the style of pants that have become popular and unpopular. Right, um, skinny jeans is basically the. It's interesting to think about skinny jeans, you know, because uh, these seem these are like the skinniest jeans I have, but they were looser. They they're usually looser, but. Um, I just put them in the wash for like the first time. I know they're all fucking tight, so I got to like loosen them up again. But, um, dude, if you look up Curtis Connor, if, or if you just scroll down my Instagram from like to like 2014, 2015, 2016, maybe, dude, I had some tight pants, dude. I had some very, very tight pants. I used to buy the, these pants from Top Man called spray on skinny jeans, they weren't actually spray on. You didn't spray them on, but it fucking looked like it, and it felt like it too. Uh, they were very, very tight. But that's what was cool, man. That's what that's what was in. Okay, P- the skinny jeans were big. Um, not really. They were pretty small, but they were they were big culturally, you know. Um, and for sure, because of those skinny jeans, I think I'll never be able to have kids. I'm not even joking. I feel like the the amount of tension that those jeans put on my balls is uh, is actually irreparable. Uh, my balls were just completely sk- fucking squished, ha- being squeezed by denim for like three years, and that can't be good, right? Even if I did somehow have the ability to, you know, make a child with the with my balls. Uh, the, it would kid, the kid would come out all like shriveled, you know, it'd be like a raisin, be all squish, you know, he'd be like, a um, I'm trying to think like, uh, you know how, uh, is it an episode of SpongeBob where Patrick is all, like all squished down? That's what he would look like, you know, I'm gonna search SpongeBob. Patrick, SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, Sandy, Mr. Krabs, Plankton. (sighs) 
Yes, this, dude. Yo, this is what I... <laughs> this is what my kid would look like if I was able to have a child because I wore skinny jeans for three years. Um, but now it's all baggy. You know, I like baggy pants. I got some... My pants have gotten pr- pr- progressively baggy over the past few years, okay? Uh, but this company, they're going backwards, all right? I found this... this uh, TikTok popped up on my For You page and uh, it's from the account called Kapow Meggings, which is leggings for men. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and give it a watch. Have you been wondering how to elevate your leggings? Well, I've got the answer. It's a blazer. Oof. Elevate to a smart, casual look. Or you can go for that edgy streetwear <laughs> style. Or completely elevate for a sexy, cool, formal look. You can style your Kapow leggings for any event or occasion. Whoa. So, yeah, crazy. What's that meme where it's like, these are the tightest pants in Atlanta or whatever? Tightest pants in Ohio. It's crazy when the Meggings, uh, they look like jeans, you know? I remember the first time I saw uh, girls do that in, like, middle school. They were leggings that looked like jeans, jeggings. And I was like, wait, what the fuck are you guys doing right now? That's incredible. That's two things in one. Jeggings, jorts, right? Jeans, but the, you know, the comfort of leggings, but the style of jeans. They got to they gotta do that with, like, um, uh, what else is, like, comforting, you know, like, comfortable, uh... Like a, I guess they could do that. Like a, a jean, a jean bed, like a jean bed, <laughs> a jean bed, a jed, right? That'd be pretty cool. Wake up f- just fucking warm as hell. A denim bed. That'd be great. Or like a denim, like bathrobe. <laughs> it's the least absorbent thing ever. Hmm. And it's like hard and shit. <laughs> it's got buttons on it too it's like ah fuck freezing no but that's cool the male jeggings goes hard have you been wondering how to elevate dude those leggings? pants are so tight I feel like you have to tuck if you're wearing these right cause like you know I've you know when you wear things that are like form fitting like that your friggin wiener and balls are right there Front and center, dude. They're still fucking stealing the spotlight. The cock is in the spotlight, dude. They're going, here I am. It's my, it's me, penis, and my two best friends, balls. <laughs> my two best friends, left ball and right ball. And they go, hey, guys. How you doing? These are my balls in this situation because they've been squished for four years because, because, because of skinny jeans. Because of woke. <laughs> because of skinny jeans. And they're like, hey guys, how's it going? I'm balls down here. And it sucks, all it sucks down here. Right next to the friggin' butthole sometimes. <laughs> and I get farted on sometimes. <laughs> the wiener's all stoked. He's like, what's up guys? I'm the wiener. The balls are like, I get farted on sometimes. <laughs> Dude, this is the worst podcast of all time. <laughs> I got farted a lot of times. Well, I've got the answer. It's a yeah, blazer. Dude. That'll elevate the jeggings is the blazer, the tight fucking blazer, dude. This is crazy. This looks like a video game character and they haven't really nailed, like someone who's just learning how to like 3D model and they haven't quite learned how to uh, do like fabric. You know, so this is just like the leg t- and they just put a jean texture on the leg, right? It honestly looks like he was born, his legs, he's actually born and with what denim legs, the denim leg syndrome, <laughs> DLS, dude. The baby comes out head first and he's like crying. It's like, oh, it's a healthy baby. Wow. They go torso. It's like looking all good. And then they pull out and his jeans are like, oh no. The mom's like, what? What's wrong? Uh, I'm sure you want to know. Yes, I want to know. Your baby has jean legs. No. How did this happen? How 
How did this happen? He was perfectly healthy. He didn't see on the ultrasound. How has this happened? How is my baby born with gene legs? And then the doctor's like, well, it's, you know, it's all because of your genes. <laughs> it's all because of your genes. It's genetic. Genes. You know, sometimes I'll do a bit like that, and it doesn't have a good ending, and I kind of just move on. But sometimes, on the rare occasion, I actually find a joke, and uh, I it deserves to be celebrated. Okay, so oh yeah. Also, I forgot to uh, dude. I'm so I'm in I'm in away from my soundboard for so long that I forgot that like how to use it. Sorry. So um, back to really quick. Thank you for everybody coming to my shows in Appleton, Wisconsin. All right, <laughs> here we go. Back to let's get back to this fucking. Uh, Meggings. Also, I just, I don't like how they put the M in front of it to turn it into a guy thing, right? That's dumb. That is dumb. I think they should, uh, like, we got to come up with new names, right? And yeah, I think I made this point in the, the gendered products video I did, but like, like, you don't have to... What was the fucking point I was going to make? Leggings aren't fucking gendered. Like, everyone has legs. Everybody has legs, right? Like you don't have to put the fucking noise for man, dude. Right? You put an M in front of something that makes it automatically for guys, right? M- m- uh, hmm. You know, maybe instead of, like, menopause, it'd be menopause. <laughs> You know, or maybe just for clothing, right? Instead of shoes, guys, guys wear moves, moves. Mm, yeah, they're cows now. Instead of a boy cow is a mal. What else? There's a. Hmm. Socks, mocks. The socks for boys are mocks. Box, uh, there's a uh, nipples for men. We call them uh, nipples. That's actually, I'm actually okay with that. We should start doing that. My nipples. All right, let's keep moving on. Sir, elevate a smart, casual look, or you can go for that. Yeah, dude, are you hiring this person? Elevate if someone walks into the 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 job interview with meggings and you see their cock and balls right in front of you, you go, whoa. You're hired. <laughs> a smart, casual look. Or you can go for that edgy streetwear yeah, style. Yeah, that's edgy streetwear for sure. Dude, those shiny maggings, bro. You know what would actually be super funny? If they came out with, like, baggy maggings. And it's like, okay, so pants? <laughs> we just come, They just come full circle automatically, like, accidentally. But try out the baggy maggings. <laughs> Okay, so you're just full on pants now. No, 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 no. These are baggy meggings, all right? This, that's what these are. These are jean, these are baggy denim meggings. Okay, guys? And don't get it fucking twisted. Or completely elevate. Yo, for dude. A get, someone's got to get married in that. In the, like, it's like suede or it's like velvet around the dick and ball or on the groin. Leather, dude, a leather band around. <laughs> dude, for those of you who are just listening to this, I'm sorry, because you need to fucking see this. Go to my YouTube and watch it instead. Or I think the video's on Spotify. I don't fucking, I don't know. Um, it should be. Um, there's a leather band around the, like the thigh area. And then down there, it's like ribbed. The knees are ribbed for his pleasure down there. And then like another weird different, t- what the fuck? There's like six That's different. Cool. This is like Frankenstein meggings. They just fucking threw a bunch of them together and be like, yeah, you can get married in these. Ladies or fellas, if you're walking, you know, your your groom is waiting at the altar with the, the fucking officiant, you know, and he goes, I'll rise for the, for the bride. And then the bride walks out and it's all super, you know, emotional. And you're at the, like the back of the cathedral and you see your husband starts crying because you look so pretty it's your inner you're about to spend the rest of your lives together and then you like you kind of see your husband at the end of the, the cathedral and you and you're like okay, his pants are real they look a little tight huh? 
Okay, it's probably just my eyes playing tricks on me. It might, I, probably because I'm crying too, and it's making him look a little blurry. <laughs> I'll just keep walking. And you're like halfway, and you're like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. I think his pants are like really, really tight. Is he wearing fucking... Those aren't just regular pants, right? And then you get to the front, you're like, oh my God, he's fucking... He's, he's, he actually bought those meggings he saw on TikTok. He actually fucking bought those. I thought he sent those to me as a joke. Oh my God, okay. And then you go up and then... Uh, you do the whole thing and he's smiling, he's crying and you're crying too, but not cause you love him, but you're crying because he's wearing fucking maggings at your wedding. And then, you know, you get to the point where the, the officiant is like, does anybody have any, uh, does anybody object to this marriage? Speak now or forever hold your peace. And then the wife is like, yes, actually I do. <laughs> I do. I, I actually object to this a lot. All right. And then she looks behind her and everybody else is also objecting. The whole place is covered in puke because of the meggings. <laughs> That's a crazy Momoma. fit, dude. You can style your Kapow leggings for any event or occasion. Wow. Incredible. So this is like... How long have I been talking? Damn, I'm talking for like fucking 15 minutes about meggings, bro. Uh... So this is the account here. That one has got... That one had a lot of views. I don't know where it went. Oh, yeah. Five million views, bro. Like, a lot. This one had 720... I'm going to style three monochromatic looks for you today, all using Kapow's... Maybe it's called Kapow because that's what, like, your fucking cock and balls does to people. You know, you look at the leggings, it's like, kapow! You're like, God, man! That's your entire dick. I can see your... I can see how much pubes you have. I can see how many pubes you have. That's how tight those leggings are. <laughs> Prem Hunter nice. leggings. Add a hooded sweatshirt and a beanie for the sporty wow. look. Or go preppy and cool with an oversized button-up in a neutral wow. color block. Or for that modern western vibe, go oh, with the, the denim effect jacket that's going on and here some too. rockin' western boots. So I just showed you how one pair of Kapow meggings can give you many different looks. I'm actually pretty shocked there because I didn't realize they were the same meggings the whole time. Okay. Should I buy these? <laughs> Myth, I can't pull off men's leggings. Become the most stylish person in the room. Show your fucking wiener to everybody okay let's there's the okay let's go there's a video about the founders let's see what the founders have got to say i'm jordan this is ben we run a men's leggings company called kapow dude how- let me scroll back here uh whoa dude the fucking cosmic print male meggings that is the grossest thing I've ever seen. Dude, the cosmic... Dude. No, cosmic clothing design. No, what the fuck is it called? The fucking... Or is it just like space leggings, I guess? Is that what it would be called? Space leggings? Yeah, yeah, dude. This shit. This design, space print. Yeah, dude, why did this have such a hold on people in like 2015? Dude, like Stoner saw this in 2015. They were like, oh my God, it's like I'm space. It's like I'm in space. It's like I'm an astronaut. I'm so high. I'm like an astronaut. Oh, I just got really lightheaded. Where's my friggin' oh, sorry, I'm trying to get my uh trying to get my baba. Me call Kapow. And here's how it all began. 2009, the Burning Man of Festival. Of course. Of course you fuckers design came up with Meggings at Burning Man. You're like, what if I wanna still be naked, but not naked at the same time? How can I do that? 
We noticed that all the guys were wearing women's leggings because they loved the bright colors, but they couldn't find any for men. Dude, so it's we for, went away. of course. What did I say? It's for fucking stoners, dude. It's for people who go to Burning Man. And we designed them. At the same time, activewear was exploding. The problem was, it was all boring colors. And so, Kapow was born. We wanted to create a product that encourages self-expression and empowers men to wear what they want. So, dude, recommended. And like, look, here's the thing. I know I'm fucking shitting on this. You, if you want to fucking, if you're a guy, you want to wear meggings, that's fine. You know, I don't fucking care. You can wear you want, but you know, just fucking call them leggings, bro. Like that's so dumb. That's what I'm fucking pissed about. You know, it's stupid. And like, I just feel like, I don't know, regular pants just fucking look better, bro. To growing a community, to growing a community of okay. Guys who are confident in their own skin and believe that stereotypes aren't defined simply by what you wear. Okay, they look, okay they're kind of spitting, but... So what's the Kapow difference? We focus on supreme okay. comfort, technical fabrics, killer colors, and wild prints. We stand behind the quality of our leggings and we sell to customers in over 50 countries. We're big on ethics. I'm also playing a song that I fucking hate. I'm worried about it right now. Is it man in love? 1999, something in the TikTok songs can suck my fucking balls, bro. I hate that other song that's like, These beautiful things that I've done. Bye. Bye. That song, that song sucks. I hate that fucking song. All right? And I don't want to hear it anymore. Like relax, dude. Uh, what are we at? Mm. Guys, let's do some quick advice, and then we'll cut to the interview. Um, um, uh, we can do some advice. Uh, uh, Damn, I need a jingle for my advice segment. Jingle, 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 jingle for my advice segment. For my advice segment. Jingle for my advice segment. Okay, so. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, if you want to submit any advice questions, we sort of switched it up, okay? The only way to submit them is through Patreon. Send me a message on there, um, and that's how we get them, because it got a little overwhelming. And also, we kind of switched up the advice. It's more so for now, you know, it, we're going to do more so silly ones, silly advice, maybe settling debates and stuff, some advice on that, um, because... I sort of started to feel feel guilty about people giving people advice because there are most of them were like real life issues that should have been told to a therapist. So I got scared and I don't want to ruin people's lives. So we're doing silly shit only. All right. Uh, so this first one, this one is from um, Simba. Hi. Not sure how I'm supposed to ask for. Okay. Yeah, you got it. I need advice on telling my parents to stop bugging me about my blood sugars. I'm a 20-year-old type 1 diabetic, and it's honestly the most frustrating thing in the world to get texts from my parents while I'm busy about my blood sugar. But I also don't want them to think I don't appreciate that they care about me. Please help. Okay. So that's a good question. I, I've some, that's something I've never uh, had to deal with. But I can imagine, you know, you want to be, uh, be independent, right? You want to feel like you can take care of yourself. But, you know, your parents are like, come on, uh, take your insulin, have a juice box, you know? And that's tough, too, because you don't want to be like, shut the fuck up. I know, you know, because that's just like kind of fucked up because, you know, they're just trying to help you. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's tricky. I mean, I guess the real way. I guess my honest answer, like the, probably the correct answer is to just be up front and be like, hey, I know you're reminding me because you love me, but. You are treating me like a child. I'm an adult now, and I can do this by myself. I And you have to trust me, you know? Um, I think that's the perfect way to do it. But what you could do instead is um, maybe maybe try to text them. In the, the amount that they're texting you, maybe text them something that they should already know how to do, you know? Um, like maybe text your dad every morning and be like, uh, hey, don't forget to 
drink a black coffee and cough really loud and fart a bunch. You know, don't forget to go to work today. <laughs> you know, tell your mom to like, I don't, I don't know your mom, but like, what do moms do? Be like, hey, don't forget to put on a Sarah McLaughlin CD. Don't forget. Don't forget, okay? <laughs> don't forget to post a selfie on Facebook, mom. Don't forget. <laughs> So that, and then they'd be like, maybe look at the picture and be like, oh, okay, so you, we are annoying when we do that. Gotcha, sorry. So that's my advice for you there. Uh, we got another one here. And this one's fucking crazy. This one is from uh, Mickey, the human statue. So basically, I am an identical twin, and when I was younger, I was swinging on a swing at my house. Okay. I uh, just had to flex on us really quick. You had a swing at your house? And Okay, I was swinging on a swing at my house and flipped over and cracked my head open, LOL. I had to get stitches, but my twin, sister, my twin sister thinks that this happened to her. We both have memories of being the one on the swing and the one watching the other twin on the swing. What should we do to get to the bottom of this? Is the cracked head the friends we made along the way or no? Okay, twin. Okay, twin. That's fucking crazy. Because I've heard of, like, twin telepathy and shit. And low-key, I believe it. Because I was friends with these two twins in high school. Um, obviously, I was friends with both of them. Because they were, like, pretty similar dudes. In many ways. But, um, yeah, dude. I think, um, I think, um, that is crazy. I mean, I think there's obviously an easy way to tell, right? Like, I think you guys would have scars. So, But I think both of you guys have to shave your heads. Because if you got stitches, I'm pretty sure it would leave a scar on your head. So, both sh- shave your heads right now. Um, oh, but also, like, medical records. You know, go, go check out medical records. Can you ask your parents? I'm sure they remember which one. Or, I don't know. I feel like... I feel like if I was a parent and I had twins, they would both be all fucking scrunched up because I, you know, my, my skinny jean, uh, obsession, but, um, I would forget about shit. I would confuse the two all the time. So maybe that, maybe the parents aren't really reliable there. So I go shave your head medical records, but sorry, what was I saying about uh, twin telepathy? Yeah. Sometimes my twin friends would do shit that was just like a little crazy. Like they would just like kind of like, they just fucking I don't know. I believe it. I believe in twin telepathy. I really do. Um, it's like the two the two brains that are just like connected. You know, they could probably, like honestly, if twins really wanted to, I feel like they could like start flying and shit. They could like move objects together, you know, but with their minds. Twin powers activate. Oh, I fell off a swing. No, I did. No, I did. <laughs> Such a funny thing to fight about, too. No, I hit my head. No, I did. I think you both did, actually. <laughs> you guys both did, and you forget. Because of the brain damage. I don't know. Um, but my guess, I, I would do. I would search up your medical records, maybe. Um, and shave your head to look for the scar. Not scar from Lion King. Because don't go looking for him. He's bad. All right, that was the advice segment. Um, That's my best piece of advice is do not seek Scar from Lion King because he's bad. But guys, we're going to cut to an interview I did in Appleton, Wisconsin with an actor from the friggin' Alpha True fucking... What the fuck was it even called? I always forget the name of the fucking... It's like Alpha's Love, Forbidden Desires or some shit like that. Um, you know, the Alf- I did an episode about it a few weeks ago with the fucking Step Bro Alpha professor thing. And we learned a lot. I actually learned a lot interviewing this actor. So um, enjoy it. Um, and I'll see you afterwards. Hello. Hello, Cass. <laughs> yeah. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Great. Great. Uh, thank you for sitting down with me to uh talk about uh your experience filming the the iconic (laughs) the iconic film iconic well short film series Mm -hmm. um of course thank you for having me 
Oh, of course. So this was uh, you were in Forbidden Desires, Alf, Alpha's, Alpha's love. love. Yeah. And who did uh, who did you who did who did you portray in in in, in this? I played Mia, mm -hmm. Chloe's best friend, who is also a witch. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, kind of the only person that was on Chloe's side. Everyone was kind of right against her. Yeah, it seemed they were pretty mean. They were pretty mean to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just so it's interesting to talk to someone who was in this because, um, and this this is probably gonna sound fucked up, but like when I do watch these. Like there's because I made a video of about a, a a thing similar to I know a different film that is similar to this in plot and theme, and yeah. the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, this doesn't seem like a a real thing I'm watching that with like a real script supervisor and sets and costume like, but it's like when you think of like <laughs> it's like a full on production. Oh yeah, there was so many people that worked on it yeah. every day i was on set it there was easily 50 people on the crew damn every day yeah damn that's yeah. crazy and so yeah how did you um how did you find out about this role like <laughs> <laughs> so i kind of had a different experience from everyone else i the producer uh, who i think she was the producer um fan she i worked with her on a different project i did a commercial for her for i think amazon for a storage maniac container unit thing okay um and another girl that was helping with the video um they were both from china um and they asked me uh if i was willing to audition after I worked with them mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh yeah. Cause I knew that they were casting it while I was shooting this commercial with them. Right. Um, and funny enough, they wanted me to play Serafina originally. Oh, damn. the, the blonde chick that that's the bully. Right. Um, I'm much happier with the role I got because <laughs> I'm definitely like, I can play mean, but like I'm much, she was much more suited for that role than I was. Yeah. She was, um, she was she super was mean. mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, they were like, are you willing to audition? And I was like, yeah. And then they like were like, actually, never mind. We're just going to cast you. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, sick. So um, they asked me if I was available for four days of shooting. Okay. And I believe in total it was eight days of shooting. Damn, for I was going to say, yeah. Okay, so the whole thing. But so th the scenes that you weren't in i guess so only yeah. four days for you and then full thing was eight days okay damn yeah it was a interesting process but i know that they had advertised it on like backstage.com okay. i think that's how everyone else found it yeah um but it was uh it was interesting i showed up to set the first day in new york city at like a school um shot the classroom scene where they're calling Chloe a slut and right. everything. Iconic. I think they shot the shower, the iconic shower scene oh, yeah. that day <laughs> that everyone's seen. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other couple of days was in, I think there were two in upstate New York at this beautiful, like giant mansion. Wow. That like, it, it was an Airbnb but they had so many rooms um, and they were actually so nice. Um, they were like, you can stay overnight because you're shooting tomorrow. Oh, wow. And I, that like, that's you know, nice. that's rare. <laughs> so I was like, I would love to, but I, I couldn't. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people did stay overnight. Um, cool. Because they did start like at 6 a.m. every day shooting. Damn. Something like that. So it's like, so it's like a pretty big production that they got going on for for this. oh my gosh it was the the food that they brought on set the amount of people that worked on it wow the amount of cameras the different angles uh that they shot wow um it was a lot but it was i think originally written in chinese so oh. the, the, some of the translations were a little bit okay that 
interesting. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, some of the things didn't really. I mean, like it all made sense, obviously, but it was just like a little. Some of the stuff was a little off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think a lot of us tried to fix the dialogue. Mm-hmm. Right. Say, um, uh, but you know, there's only so much you can do with "Hey, step bro" kind of <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that doesn't really. Yeah, there's only there's only so much. Yeah, there's only so much you can do with a script like that. Um, um, so this was on short TV. TV. Yeah, and I, I know you said something about real short, too. Yeah. Um, I, I heard originally that that's where it was supposed to be. Oh. So I don't know what happened or if I just heard wrong information, but I don't know if they work with both companies or what. Right. Yeah. That's what I was trying to figure out on the, the podcast. Cause they mm-hmm. both, they share certain actors. Um, yeah. There's, they appear in there. There's very similar themes and storylines. A lot of alphas, a lot of wolves. Um, yeah. They, they really love that. <laughs> they, they do. They really do. <laughs> um, so yeah, you sent over some pictures too. I want to look at those. I um, did. Oh yeah, so that's you in the nice in the uh, dress there, a nice a nice mirror selfie. Oh, I, there. Was, I was I was <laughs> like that just so you know, that's me in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> oh yeah, so they that had was at the house we shot at. Yeah, it looks nice. So you had like Yeah, there's like uh script supervisor and everything like they had do they have like costume people on set too like makeup and everything they had hair and makeup they did have like a wardrobe supervisor but mm-hmm. all the costumes that i brought were my own i know chloe they uh, supplied clothes for her mm-hmm. but i think a majority of us just brought our own clothes and then gotcha. they said yes or no right okay cool based on what they were shooting that day yeah um and but yeah, there were standard. so many people. So many people. Damn. Did they have um did they have a VFX supervisor on set? I don't <laughs> think so. Yeah. Uh, I know there's in the trailer that I sent you, um yeah. there's this uh part where I'm doing magic. Yeah. And they were like, Do magic hands and I was like Oh dang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, I guess you just had to I made it up. You said to make uh, it up. Yeah, and then halfway through, I was like, "Oh, maybe I should go like like that." And they're like, "No, just keep what you were doing because we already got that." And I was like, "Okay, right, you got to keep it specific, yeah." Yeah, <laughs> keep it consistent. Um, we did have. Um, they didn't have a fight s- supervisor or fight coordinator, right? On set, but one of our actors was actually a like a fight coordinator. Oh, and he was. I volunteered to like help figure out how to do this. That's awesome. There were some fight scenes in there that um, mm-hmm. I haven't seen yet, but <laughs> I know I got pushed. I know Chloe punches uh, Adrian's dad in the face. Whoa. There were there were a couple of things that were like, right. We need someone to teach us how to do this safely. So I guess I guess from what you're saying with like the uh, even like the the on the fly translation of stuff and uh the fight supervising thing it's like so it seemed like pretty collaborative on it was on the set. it was yeah um they and they were the nicest people i'm pretty sure i know the girls that i worked with were from china i don't know if all of them were from china but english was like pretty much all of their second language so wow. they were very like yeah tell us like how do we fix this kind of and, okay, and it, it was cool. great. They were all very nice. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. that's the thing I learned on the when I did the video about real short. It when I went to their website, everything was um, like there. It was like mostly their main stuff was in like another language, so I couldn't uh, really understand it. So I guess I'm just trying to get figure out what their <laughs> business plan is. So I guess they're trying to branch out into western media yeah it's like the only way i can describe it is like that episodes app in real life 
Like yeah, yeah, you're right. But without choosing. Yeah, they choose for you. Yeah. Yeah. Were they? they choose everything. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of nice. You don't have to do anything. You have to buy any mm-hmm. diamonds or anything. Well, step yeah. bro, professor, werewolf, all <laughs> yeah, of it. Let's just throw it all in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, were they? So, because this is only shot like vertically, it does like I don't think a landscape version exists, right? No, no, yeah, they shot them like fancy cameras, but like they did like have it sideways set to only only film sideways. Yeah, oh, cool. I was always yeah. I always think about that too. I'm like, do they think of do they just do it like that and then crop it, or do they just completely flip the camera up? But yeah, cool. Basically. Yeah. Damn. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any like s- funny stories? What happened on set or anything? Anything? Cra- anything nuts? Anything silly anything or crazy? Nuts. Um. Let me think. Um, I know, like, a lot of them. It was like their first time shooting anything for film. Mm. Um. I mean, everyone was so nice. We we got along really well anything funny it's okay if i not. mean <laughs> well <laughs> nothing really funny happened it was more just like fun hanging out with everyone mm-hmm. um there was like a time where we had to shoot in a really cold basement for a really long time oh, so we were all bundled up with like heat all the hand warmers uh, and stuff. they gave us like hand warmers and stuff um the poor woman that that played um the mom had like blood put on her neck and it got all in her hair (laughs) and her hair's blonde. So, and it's like sticky blood. So it was like, Oh no. Yeah. So uh, I had, I had one other question. I feel like I, like when you were on set, I feel like, um, the, it's pretty campy. I feel is the word. It's very like, you know, this isn't, we know we're not doing the fucking uh, top of the line CGI stuff for the fights and everything. Um, yes. So pretty camp, I guess. But, and I think, and it comes through with like the dialogue and just the themes of like, and all the memes and stuff. Uh, so do you think like when you guys were on set, we were like, we just got to fucking go for it, play into it, I guess. Um, yeah, there, the, uh, I remember specifically the proposal scene, um, Adrian proposes to Chloe, um, spoiler alert. alert. (laughs) Um, (laughs) but, uh, I remember that was such a a silly, fun moment for all of us. Uh, Mm. Chloe's putting her eye drops in because she's got to cry and the Chloe and Adrian had such like a funny dynamic with each other. I mean, they had to because it's they both are in relationships. They're both like filming this like raunchy, right? Yeah, like like it. It was crazy, but like they were very fun to work with. They were like grabbing each other and like laughing and like it was just uh, a very lighthearted environment for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> That, Everyone was having fun with each other. That makes me very happy to hear because you never, yeah. Like looking from the outside, you can only, you. I think people only assume like the the weird, like the worst stuff, I guess. Um, <laughs> but that is that makes me happy that it was like a good uh, environment for people. Oh yeah, they treated us very well. They were very nice. Um, everyone got along great. Uh, That's yeah. awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, would you would you do another one if they uh, if they came knocking on your door? Well, I can't say but it oh could shit <laughs> stay tuned whoa Who knows? damn Who all right I, yeah i don't want to i don't want to get you in trouble <laughs> um yeah they're very strict about like the copyright i didn't sign like an nda or anything but right like, yeah say nice things and i i only have nice things to say right but... yeah yeah it's not like a marvel level like secrecy or anything but no no not at all <laughs> but um i can't like share any of the videos that like i found on tiktok or anything right but yeah. okay got you that makes sense um yeah well cassidy thank you so much for sitting down and talking to me and providing an insight into the uh into the into the world of <laughs> forbidden desires alpha's Alpha love, love. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah also if you know if 
if friggin' short TV is watching, I want it. I also want to do one. <laughs> let's get <laughs> let's get it going. <laughs> let's get you cast in the next one. Yeah, I want to be the alpha vampire wolf. <laughs> <laughs> vampire wolf, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, uh, yeah. Anything you want to like plug or shout out or anything? Um. Follow me on TikTok at cascast underscore c a s c a s underscore. Um, and my Instagram is at Cassidy Tertiano, just my full name. Fuck yeah. Very long, hard to spell Italian last name. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> we could fi- I'll spell it out. My What could put on the screen? So it'll, it'll make it easy for people. Um, thank you. So- thank you so much for sitting down. Appreciate it. And uh, Chris, thank you. Yeah. Back to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Very Really Good. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Um, If you guys want some more Very Really Good, you guys can go to the Patreon, patreon.com slash very really good. You can click the link in the description. Uh, We do bonus episodes and there's a ton on there and that you immediately get access to uh, when you join. So it's always a good time over there. They're more chill, right? Uh, and it's a, it is a great way to support the pod, but no pressure. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next week. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. That was a weird burp. All right. See you.